Joining us now at ASH 2013 in New Orleans is Harlan Robbins, PhD. He's co-founder of Adaptive Biotechnologies Corporation in Seattle, Washington. Beautiful Seattle, Washington. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you. If you would, just give us a little background on your company and what it does. Yeah, so we're a spin-out from Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center in Seattle. And we uh, combined immunology and uh, genomics to sequence the B cell and T cell receptors, which are part of the adaptive immune system. And this is a it started as a collaboration between my lab at Fred Hutchinson, uh, Dr. Edis Warren at Fred Hutchinson, and Dr. Chris Carlson at, at Fred Hutchinson. And in 2010, we spun the company out. Um, it's actually physically right down the street, so uh, we can walk back and forth as needed. And it's uh, presently we. We presently have two products available. The first is a research use only product called ImmunoSeq. And what this is, is it's, a, it's an in-house assay where researchers send us samples from all over the world, um, including um, academic key opinion leaders as, as well as um, most uh, major pharma companies. Um, and these Samples are brought in-house, we perform our assay, which creates a, a massive amount of, of uh, genomics data, for uh, the, specifically the T-cell and B-cell receptor data, which we then upload onto our relational database, and everybody, all our clients get a secure login, and they're able to visualize and analyze the data using our, our tools that we've developed. And then, if they so desire, they can, of course, download the data and use it in, in any way they like. Um, but we also have a team of bioinformaticists, which helps them um, understand the data. Hopefully, as, as time progresses um, and this becomes more and more widely used, that will become less and less necessary because people will have their own in-house you know, expertise in these areas. But for now, we're the experts because we've been playing with this data for, for years. Now, as related to this particular conference, uh, ASH uh, 2013, the, it's our other product that I think is getting the most um, traction, and that's our clinical product. So we have a laboratory-developed test, and this laboratory-developed test is to um, both help detect uh, lymphoid malignancies, um, blood cancers, as well as detect, um, monitor minimal residual disease. What is the cancer burden after treatment at any later time point? Um, and it's a, a precise, accurate molecular test um, that's gaining wider and wider use um, as we go. Now, you had some data being presented here? Yes, so we have, uh, there's at least uh, 12 different posters and four different, four different um, in, uh, talks, um, and we're probably involved in research with another five or six talks as well. Um, but those talks are presenting uh, our, um, the results that we've been able to provide for the residual disease testing. What most of these researchers are using our assay for is to determine whether or not their therapy has actually gotten rid of the cancer, the, which is the objective, obviously, of their therapy. And since we're um, 100 times more sensitive than what's generally the state of the art or has been the state of the art for the last um, you know, 20, 30 years, um, we're able to, at a, at a very precise level, really determine whether the therapy truly cured somebody or, or just knocked down their cancer at some level that might come back at a later time point. So Harlan, you've got your fingers in a lot of different things here. What's your take on the significance of the material being presented here at this conference? Basically, we, um, in terms of, in terms of, from, from us, I think as we started here four years ago when we had a six-person company, and now we have a 50-person company, and, and um, most of the key opinion leaders, uh, many of them are using our technology, and, and at least uh, all the rest have, have now heard of us and are, and are aware of it and, and, and are contemplating it. And so from, from our perspective, there's um, a couple um, a key, uh, key pieces of data being presented that I think really uh, uh, will, we hope, push the whole field towards the, the, the molecular testing. I mean, we see it as the future, and I think, I think um, a lot of, um, if you ask the, the top people in the area, they would also say it's the future, but we're also trying to say, hey, it's not just the future, it's the present. We can do it now. And, and, but in order to do that, you need to develop the set of, the, the significant data sets that prove it. And um, there's um, a, a few 
larger data sets that are being presented here that I think really nail down um, uh, the advantages of having the more sensitive and accurate assay. Um, in particular, we're able to, um, there's a talk on Tuesday morning by uh, Michael Pulsifer, part of the Children's Oncology Group, where they're really found that it, in the patients that, that for BALL that do not have, uh, that we're not able to find any residual disease by our sensitive method, those patients have less than 5% chance of relapsing. Whereas the patients that are um, found to not have residual disease by the state of the art, which is less sensitive, 25% of those still relapse. So it's really saying, you know, the difference between being cured and not being cured. And I think that data set, um, which obviously we're writing up for publication as well, but when he presents that, I, I think that that's, you know, symbolic of, from, from our perspective of, of, of Symbolic is probably another word, but it's 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 a uh, it's a turning point for us to really say here's the true clinical value of this. Very good. We wish you luck. Yeah. Continued Thank growth. You. Thank you. Appreciate hey, it. Hey, Harlan Robbins, PhD, co-founder of Adaptive Biotechnologies Corporation, joining us here in New Orleans at Ash 2013.